Yeah, all right, everybody, we are here today taking a look at the early access release of stories from the outbreak. Now, some of you might recall we actually covered this one in the last Steam Fest demo, if I'm correct. So much, in fact, that I was telling myself when this comes out, available for everybody, we would check it out. So that's what we're doing here today. Now, this game comes out on the 27th of March. I'm not sure this video will go live on that day, a little bit afterwards, or maybe before. We'll see, depending on how my schedule works out. But um, it's one that I'm very intrigued by. I think you'll enjoy it personally if you saw the first video or check out the demo by for yourselves. It's very much uh, Darkest Dungeon-ish, for sure, with an entire zombie post-apocalypse survival element to it. So. It's one that, as you could probably imagine, I'm very excited for. Let's take it out here for a spin. If you guys enjoy what you see here today, want me to go beyond this video to do a bit more coverage on this, do let me know in the comments. I'm leaving a thumbs up, and we could definitely do that for now. Let's get to it. All right, everybody. So for the purpose of us getting further in this video than we did with the Steam Fest coverage that I did, we will be skipping the tutorial. It's like basically two battles that just teaches you the basics. And as Anna, you meet your first teammate, who happens to be Janice. We do have three different paths, one that leads us to food, unknown location, or at least uh, unknown event at this location, and then here we expect to find fuel. So maybe we'll go with fuel instead, just so we could use it for trading with survivors, so let's go with that one. The outbreak has brought more than just zombies to plague the world. As the government and the military forces realize they're up against the unstoppable enemy, they begin paying less and less attention to keeping the peace within. While most people cling to order and collective peacekeeping anyway, the Collapse of Society has secured the opportunity for some to indul indulge in dark, forbidden desires. Actions that used to be considered crimes, a word now utterly meaningless. Considering this, it's not a particularly unique sight to witness murders, lynchings, and survivor-on-survivor -survivor battles. The team finds an aftermath of something alike. A man lying against a wall bleeding to death from what appears to be a gunshot wound in his, in his abdomen. He slowly and faintly moves his head to look at the team. Next to him are a few cans of fuel free for the taking. So, we will indeed take the fuel. As the team takes his fuel, the man makes some faint gargling sounds. A bit of blood drips out of his mouth. He seems to be trying to get the team's attention, but he's too close to death to talk. Now, here, if we had the... I guess the overall intelligence as a team to do this, we'd be able to try to communicate. But right now, we only have an 8. Optimal for this event would be 14. I believe we saw this event in the Steam Fest demo, and I just put him out of his misery. I'm not even trying. How about this time we switch it up a little bit and try? There's simply no use talking to this man. As the team tries communicating, he just slowly lifts a hand and points towards the team, with seemingly no purpose or intent. So, at the very least, we might as well put this dude out of his misery. Don't leave him there to suffer more as he's bleeding to death. Next up, we have a fight. All right, we have Infected and Houndman. Janice is mainly a dude that's gonna be taking damage for the team. He's gonna be our shield mostly, whereas Anna's gonna be the hard hitter as we go along here. Instead, what I'll do is I'll hit him with hemorrhage, put a little bleed on him. Don't push me too far down the active meter. We're almost coming up again, which is great. And as a matter of fact, if we hit him with Carnage, 25 attack, it'll knock him out. So that's probably the best thing that we can do for now. Um. As you can see, both of the enemies are targeting Anna now. We don't want that happening. So with our boy Janice here, let's go ahead and do a wild shout. Coming to me, bros. And then with Anna, we will indeed hit Carnage. Right, that's going to delay me quite a bit, unfortunately, but at least there's one less dude. And then we take nine armor damage, so we're still fine. Back to Janice. This guy is now aiming at Anna. So at this point, I'm going to say, you could aim at Anna. I'm going to hit you with a rusted blade to do a little bit of um, damage over time with poison on you. And we get to act again. I could recover her, sure, but instead I'll do another rusted blade. Stack some more poison damage there. Wow, he actually got through the protection in one attack. That's impressive. So a 9 on him, but like 19 on her because it was 15 in the extra 4. Wow. And the problem is that he's coming after Anna again. Ooh. Man, that was costly. And that's going to turn out to be quite costly then. Well. Let's hit him with this. Not crazy about what went down right now, but you know. 
It is what it is. Now he's aiming at Janice. Rusted blade. Yeah, might as well. It'll give us another chance in between. Now we hit total focus here. So this lets me, once you hit fo four focus, it gives you like a little party buff. So I'm thinking, let me hit me up with this one here. Now, with our girl, 27. The follow up should be enough to kill him with Janice, who's coming up first. So let's hit him with that. As a matter of fact, even the passive damage over time should kill him. Oh, and she also got the focus buff here. Which lets me heal some HP on the fly, so that's great. So we took nine there. I'm not crazy about it, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. The dead bodies of these foes are a reminder that the team may yet find a way to survive in a dying city. So a new ability has been unlocked, which happens to be... What? Unhinged Intimidation. And we also picked up the Plastic Lighter. Character without protection deals a... MR damage to enemies. The voice coming from the small flame talks about a land of endless warmth, of gifts that demand the sacrifice of your own safety. Is there's a voice coming from the small flame? Hey. I did you join us in the demo? I don't remember. Victoria. The best defense. Deal 15 damage, deal half damage of its character. That's the guard effect. So the best defense would be seven if we have barricade up. Laugh it off. Character in his row gains five protection. And we can indeed set up the role of our characters as well. Um, so you know what? That way she could put up the protection for Janice as well. That's what I'm thinking. And then we'll have Anna in the back. Hounders. The best friend. A hound varying to use its powerful single target focus boost. Both kid and siblings. Yeah, no kidding. You know what? Let's just do a bad bash. Right, and we could go again afterwards. Now, with Victor Regia, this is one of the one I'm kind of curious about. So right now we do 15 damage to this dude if we hit him with the best defense straight up. Otherwise, we could do barricade, although I don't feel like we need barricade at the moment. They are targeting Anna, but we could just use um Janice for the shout. We can do laugh it off. Characters in this row gain 5 protection. The next 25 ticks, characters in this row heal 3 health whenever attacked. That sounds kind of sexy to be honest with you. <laughs> and then, with our girl Anna, at this point I guess we just hit him with the carnage. She's gonna butt us back for quite a bit, but... One less dude to deal with. 14 damage, right? Now then. Where's he coming? He's coming after Janice again, which is great. Do we put a little bit of poison on this dude for some passive? Or do we want to protect? Protect. This guy still has a ton of HP, doesn't he? Let's put in some more passive damage as we go along here. We took some HP damage there. That's to be expected. This guy is focused again. Oh, he just continues getting that buff no matter how many times. Wow. That's insane. Laugh it off. Or damage. I... Well, he's coming after her. So you know what? Do some damage. 58, 58, 58. Now her buffs, I don't know. Refuse to die. Gain 4 protection for every 10 health below maximum. Team gains 4 protection. It's going to be the same as the other one. Treat wounds. Gain plus 1 renewal. Yeah, let me do the treat wounds, I suppose. And I'm going to let her take that hit. Although I could also help her out by dropping protection on her. Now, Anna's back. This guy's at 56. Before I go swinging for the fences, let's do a bit more passive damage. That's perfect. 84 of 90, I'll take it. And we have all three of us coming up. 45. I think that if we all gang up, 4, 15, and then Anna, we should be able to knock him out this turn. So you know what? Everybody just attack. Everybody just attack. We got it. Man, this guy wasn't playing around. The dead bodies of these foes are a reminder that the team may yet find a way to survive in this dying city. So we got one inspiration point for Anna. Lowers the ability cooldown. That actually sounds very useful, especially with that long cooldown. 
on Carnage. New ability for Janus. Reciprocation. Of, let's see, the infested pharmacy. Of all the locales left empty by the indiscriminate wrath of the new debt, few tell a story as sad as the pharmacies and hospitals. Other than perhaps a sign or two, it's hard to tell a pharmacy apart from any other empty building. The shelves tend to be utterly and completely empty, no matter, uh, no attempt by the military to stop the looters. Could hold out against a horde of desperate people convinced that some medicine, any medicine, could help their loved ones. Perhaps as tragic as the fact that no treatment proved effective, other than maybe preventing the infection of hundreds of people who used such inhumane amounts of completely unrelated dangerous medications that not even the new dead could raise them from the graves afterwards. However, there are outliers. The team finds one such pharmacy a few corpses lying nearby, where there's still some supplies which could be used to patch up their wounds. The growls of a zombie horde indicate that getting to these supplies might not be easy. The team can fight a zombie group and be healed afterwards, or try to heal by sneaking past them. We have an overall agility of 17, 18 is the optimal. I don't know, what do you think, like a 90% chance of success? This is an XCOM row. Oh, thank God it worked. If it wasn't for their growly, uh, crackled breathing, the unmoving zombies might be unmistakably assumed inanimate. They stare distantly at the streets as the team finds a side entrance and quietly enters the pharmacy, taking some of the supplies. Knowing that the slightest noise will catch the attention of the undead, the team leaves soon and doesn't risk exploring some parts of the store. After six successfully leaving, they patch up briefly. Shame. Rumination. We should have separated. I wish she was by my side now. Huh. Well, everybody's healed up again, which is perfect. You got shame one. I believe Janice's story is that he's looking for his wife. So... Because of this, he lost some toughness, which I'm not happy about. The call for help. At first, hearing the faint distant growls and moans of zombies seems like an auditory illusion, striking as a side effect of apocalyptic trauma. But as the team keeps moving and the noise becomes louder, the team realizes it's time to be stealthy. Their quiet, slow movements come to an abrupt halt when a scream startles them. Help us, God! Please, someone help us! The screams come from a nearby building. And so does the voice of the infected. The team can investigate or keep moving. Let's see how it pans out. Frenetic. I don't think I've ever seen a zombie before. A frantic variant that is slower at building up focus, but inflicts a lot of bleed. Frequently attacks the front row. Start with her hemorrhage, just for a little passive damage over time. And they're set up. This actually might be better, yeah. This just guarantees the knockout. Now, do I want to roll the dice with Bloody Triumph? If we hit this, it lowers the cooldown by 30 ticks, so we're looking at a 14. From 10 to 30, we have to hit 18 at least. Otherwise, we still have to go with Carnage. It's risky. It is super risky. Oh! <laughs> we absolutely drop this. Now he's looking for bleed, right? Yeah. Bleed indeed is what he's looking for. So how about we also return to favor? He's going after Janice again, which is fine. Let's set up our passives, especially because he's quick. He'll bleed more often that way. We will indeed put this up on you. We have some focus as well. Um, let's get protect teammates. Perfect. Now, 29. Not enough, but we can now hit Carnage and then follow it up with um, Janice and we have gone through this one. Push through? Sure. Doesn't matter at this point. Matter of fact, the poison almost dealt him out. Aftermath. Dr. Dre. These survivors seem infinitely grateful for the team's help. Thank you, thank you so much. My sister and Na and myself, we would be dead if it wasn't for your kindness. Please, take some supplies, whatever you need. You've earned it. <laughs> You're kidding me? Yeah, you need it more than we do? No, I'm sorry, dog. I think I'll be playing right now. This is the post-apocalypse. 
They shake hands as the man gives the team some canned food and wishes them luck. It doesn't seem like this family will have much food left for themselves, but there's not a great chance they'll survive anyway. The team needs their... this food more. I mean, don't, don't make me guilty for helping these people. At least they're still alive because of me. <laughs> you know? So here we get to rest and use that food, and then we have our boss fight. Infected. Infected. Alright. A little bit of hemorrhaging, I suppose. Massive damage. Let's set that up. And a bit more hemorrhaging. Which sets me up to come up pretty soon. 48. Now, do we wild shout with her boy? Uh. I. Yes. I guess we will. Both of you come at me. More hemorrhaging. You know, at this point, let's just hit up with a bad bash. 35. Over to Janice. Janice, 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 you're about to get attacked. Boyo, so how about recover on yourself? Now up to 40. Looking rather stellar. And then we attack here. Being perfect. We'll guard both of them. Not too bad. If they do 18 on you, you cover most of it here with 15. So that's fine. 16, 16, 16. Oh, does it really have to be? I'm gonna we're gonna roll the dicing with bloody triumph. I'm what I'm looking at. Ooh, just what we needed. Could you imagine? One less than we actually needed. Oh, but the mad works out. Oof, ooh, ooh, ooh. almost took unneeded damage in that one. The dead bodies of these foes are a reminder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a new ability unlocked for. Victoria, combat expertise. Target ignores the next source of damage, other than poison or bleed. And we got a dented flask. Deal extra damage to enemies equal to their focus. Hmm. Well, safe house is here. Your team has arrived to an empty but seemingly secure and hidden location. So I just I eat, I need to eat half just so we don't lose HP is the problem. All right. It's gonna be the same dude, the Hound Walker. Now, I, I don't remember if he actually summons adds again if you knock him out. I feel like he does, but there's a limit to how many he actually could summon back, and then they will eventually stomp all together. Well, let's start off with a little. A little bat bash to get some focus up as well. Now, what are these guys doing? Preparing other action. Then. Or. Maybe if we don't want a wild child, just put some defense on her and let her eat it. I'm not sure how hard the Houndwalker hits for. I don't remember him being too strong. I felt like it was the hounds that did most of the work against us. Therefore, let's do it that way. Sure. We'll see if it's a good idea or not. Now with our girl here, uh, 20 ticks, uh, 14. Oh, no, no, I'll take the bad bash then. Because that's going to... Wait, wait, wait. Can we do it? Yeah. I'll do this for the focus as well. Yeah, yeah, he's not that strong. It's only when he gets powered up with the hounds, if I remember correctly. I think we should do reciprocation. So your focus is up. Let's just do damage on this guy right now, as much as possible. Look, triumph. Should we set up some hemorrhaging as well, you're thinking? You know what, I'm gonna go with Bad Bash, just so that we could build up that focus. And we got the counter. Nice. There comes another hound. Okay. Leave Anna alone. Come at me. Anna. Let's have you focus up. But I'm going to bleed the hound walker so then every attack afterwards with her. Yeah. Let's do bloodshed. Victorija. Victorija. Let's have you... Oh, she can take this guy out right now. Perfect, do it. Let's go. Plus one strength on Houndwalker. Um, who's coming after me? That. 
Oh, let's go. Oh, we are wrecking this dude with those um, return attacks, by the way. Another hound. He's at 38. Hammer gem for the extra buff effect. Oh my god, 19. Oh, perfect. Um, plus three whenever taking damage. No, the counter's gone. Oh, but the counter was so good this entire fight. Oh, Janice is back? Or Victory? Oh, she was so close to knocking this dude out. Oh, she did! Let's go! Man, we just steamrolled this boss. Cutting this field down feels like a genuine act of heroism. The team has banished something above the simple, unthinking bloodthirst of the other infected. It's unclear whether the haunting smile of this hound walker reflected unyielding wisdom, or perhaps it was a sign of pure evil. Almost as if the other scavengers had been too scared to approach this creature, the team has an easy time finding fuel nearby. We also had a new ability. So, Carnage can now become Mayhem, which will be 15 damage to a row. Or it can become the side. Deal 15 damage. Deal double damage to targets who are at full health. Non-citizen passport has been picked up in a story piece. Central Police Precinct Recordings. It was around 7 o'clock in the morning. A young man was breaking into my car. He was wearing a tracksuit and a cap and was struggling to get my belongings out. I shouted for help and he noticed me. I got scared. I was afraid that he'd mug me. But he just quickly grabbed my laptop bag from the car and escaped. Well, I mean, he kind of did mug you. <laughs> Not in the traditional sense of actually hurting you, but I mean, that's take. Another survivor. All right. Victor Victoria just got a rumination. With proper planning and care, we can get through this. I must carry on. Who joined us? Dimitri. <laughs> this guy's got the entire total slab look to him too, doesn't he? Violent, empathetic. What do we have here? Nimble strikes deal three damage to all enemies, sneak past guards, okay. It's a very delayed attack though, sadism. Mark a unit, gain focus when marked unit is attacked in the next 30 ticks. And disorienting blow, deal nine damage, reduce target focus by two. Heals, how are we doing with heals? I mean, I think we should skip that because we're looking fairly good overall. The streets of Riga invite their guests to be imbued with inspiration as it offers its stories to those who take time to listen. The team sees an old woman sitting contently on a bench, seemingly indifferent to the mayhem around her. The team sees a group of scavengers celebrating a successful battle. The team meets a strange middle-aged woman who asks for 20 and Santini. The team sees a young man playing a saxophone in a boulevard, his only audience being the corpses of zombies surrounding him, presumably killed with a machine gun, lying on the ground next to him. The team can try to find serenity in the apocalypse. Certain success with these, or at least for Anna and Janice. A apparently anybody could be successful here with this. Um, I don't know what finding serenity will do for us. <laughs> but I do know that Anna is very, very important to us. And so is Janice, to be honest with you. Janice, take it. Momentarily, the clouds part just set enough for some light to shine through, illuminating the quiet street ahead of the team. A cool, refreshing June wind breezes past the Art Nouveau, carrying it with a baggage of dust and a distant smell of warm meal. A sign propped up against the window says, as long as we work together, the future belongs to us. A survivor finds serenity. The beauty of the world hasn't gone anywhere. It's just lying dormant below the facade of tough times. So Janice gets toughness inspiration point. That's good. As a matter of fact, it undid what shame did to us. Let's go check this one out. Stay back, stay away from us. Oh my God, stay the hell away from us. The voice comes from a narrow passageway where a shut metal door prevents escape from what seems to be a family, an adult man, presumably his wife, and a child. In front of them, a small group of zombies is approaching. They're moments away from meeting their new dad. Save them or carry on. Might regret it, but hey. We're in it to win it, right? Oh my god, okay, that's a new dude. But hey, this is the reason why you picked up this aside, right? Early on taking care of some enemies. So be it. So I'm gonna mark this dude. Now he's up front, perfect. 
So, Victorija, you're about to eat some damage right now. We'll set that up. To be expected. At least we... We basically negated that attack, which is great. Now, Janice, is this when you want to set up... I mean, we have two attacks coming away with Janice. This is where we could probably start doing um, our reciprocation, which worked out great last time. Or, Wild Shout, in protection. You know what? Let's, uh, let's reciprocate. Let's mark him again, then. Counter, let's go. Seven damage. Back to Victor Regent. Oh man, Anna's still all the way back there. God damn, we need to get some more skill on her so she attacks more often. <laughs> Drop that. Then with Janice, what I'm thinking, we do have the reciprocation, so let's make sure that everybody pays attention to us. Our boy is back. Now at this point, I will have you lower this guy's focus. Hmm. He didn't counter the mutant's attack. It's only if they come and attack me physically. Okay. That's good to know. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We gotta make sure this mutant is gonna be ready for a knockout. Knock out this dude now. One less thing to worry about. Yo, counter. He's almost gone. Let's go. Might be fueled up, but it don't matter. This guy's at 30. Ah, uh, the zombie's coming up. We gotta take care of the zombie now, is what I'm thinking. And by him doing that, now with Anna. Oh, that's right, though. Carnage was our big hitter. This is where I miss Carnage, because Carnage was like our, our, like, you know, hey, this guy needs just one more hit. Boom, there it is. We don't have it now. But the side should give us the boost, right? I know I could roll with Bloody Triumph. It, it'll actually give me the boost that I need as well. Oh, the poison took care of him, though. <laughs> oh my god, I was... I was clenching the booty cheeks on that one. Oof. Because he was, like, gearing up some group attack as well. The father of the family speaks to the team. Oh my god, thank you. I don't know what to say. We were trying to find some medicine for my wife, Paula, and they came out of nowhere. Look, just take our supplies, okay? It's the least we can do to repay you for saving us. The team looks at the woman and their hearts begin beating faster. Blood is soaking through the bandages, clearly covering a bite mark on her arm. She looks feverish. She's unmistakably turning. The wife is turning. Take their supplies and kill her. Don't take their supplies and kill her. Take their supplies and warn them. I mean, even if we warn them, it feels like, you know, they're going to have a tough time trying to kill their wife or mom. But can we just straight up kill her? I mean, we're saving them in the long run, but I got to do it, right? They scream in shock as the team disposes of the potential threat. Without an intact brain, she won't turn. The curses and tears of her family don't acknowledge the obvious. Their lives were just saved. With a heavy heart, the team carries on. I mean, like, they could hate me all they want, but I see them long term. Dimitri says killing an innocent person was a mistake. I question your humanity. I mean, I'm being... My entire premise behind this has been logical. The person would have ended up being a zombie eventually. Who knows how many people we just saved. I wonder how that impacts us down the line, huh? Interesting. Well... Now we have gone a little bit too long, guys, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Hope you have enjoyed. This has been stories from the Outbreak, as they've mentioned. I'm not against doing some more of this. Let me know how you feel about it. If there's enough interest, we'll definitely continue going onwards. Oh, yeah. It's a fairly long way to the next boss here. But uh, pretty good start, and we're going to have another Survivor made up here pretty soon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. March 27 is when this game comes out, in case this video comes out before then. I'll catch you guys next time.